To wrap up my Imani guide, I thought it would be a good idea to give you all some tips when fighting every champion in the game. Let's get on with it. Please, just try to understand. Understand the palm of my hand, bitch. <laughs> Against Bomb King, try your best to avoid the Grumpy Bomb stun. Outside of that, you have faster and easier to land projectiles, and his chunky hitbox makes him an easy target for the Infernal Cannon. Cassie is a difficult target to fight as Imani. The primary fire into blast shot combo can take out almost 1300 HP if she's using impulse. Try your best to make sure that her blast shot is on cooldown before engaging. Once her burst combo is down, it's fairly easy to hit her with both of your secondary abilities. Then, you can follow up accordingly. Try to play at long range with fire stance when dealing with dredge. Like with Bomb King, he has slow and predictable projectiles that you could dodge with ease. The only notable thing to watch out for is his shortcuts. On top of wasting the Infernal Cannon, shortcuts can actually teleport Dredge out of the Frostbomb's route. Hitting a Frostbomb on Drogos forces him to plummet to the ground, which makes him easy pickings for you and your team. Another cool way to reliably kill Drogos is by using the Firefly combo. Meet him in the air and knock him out with the cannon. One last cool tip against Drogos is that you can use your ultimate to waste his. Simply summon your dragon when you hear Drogos' ult winding up, Meet him halfway, and his ult will be wasted on the dragon. In the Imani Mirror matchup, typically whoever has full mana will win the duel. Watch for the enemy Frostbomb, as that will throw off both the Frostfire Glide and Infernal Cannon. If you see her committing to an Inferno Cannon, try to escape with Frostfire Glide, and if applicable, turn around and beam her down with your own cannon. Against an enemy dragon, you can actually single-handedly take it out with three Fireballs and your Inferno Cannon. Depending on their skill level, an enemy Knessa can be a real headache. Once you know where she is, try to never peek her sightlines. If you have an opening, you could try to hit a Pyroball on her at range to scare her away, or you could try to flank around and catch her that way. Her teleporter can escape both of your secondary abilities, so try to bait that out first before committing to your combos. Avoid using the dragon when Knessa is on the field, as it only takes 5 shots to kill it. Against the auto aim woman bad, Look to engage after she's used her presence, since it's her highest damaging ability. Once that's down, she should be a fairly easy target. Since Grace doesn't give Leon a lot of distance, you can reliably track her with the Infernal Cannon. If she tries to make you kneel, use your Frostfire Glide to fly to cover. If no cover is available, fly over her head and behind her. Try to be erratic with your movement so she misses the shot. Against Shaolin, you have to play very safe if he is using Desert Silence. If you get hit with that, it's game over. However, if he isn't using that busted talent, he actually isn't too difficult to eliminate. You could track the invisibility in his ultimate with both your Infernal Cannon and Dragon. On top of that, you can get an estimate on his location by using Pyromania Fireballs and the Frostbomb's AoE damage. While it is possible to track him during his withdraw, I find that it's a little more tricky since he gets a burst of movement in that ability. Try to save your Infernal Cannon until after he is used withdraw. When fighting the ultimate fun killer, try to avoid playing in his sightlines once you get a visual on him. If he isn't running the bonus HP card, you can actually kill him with one fire burst combo. When you do get in close, always initiate with your Inferno Cannon, since you could track him if he decides to run away with his stealth. Normally, you should avoid using the dragon when Strix is still alive, since he could kill it easily, but if you get close, don't forget to track his invis with the damage numbers. If he hits you with the flashbang, use the Frostfire Glide and throw your controls all over the place. Try to make it that much harder for him to get a kill on you. Against Tony, watch that Heavy Blade. It does a lot of damage and has a hefty 50% slow that lasts for 3 seconds. If he tries to spam you down with Combat Trance, use your Frostfire Glide to make some distance. If you're playing in Ice, you can actually root him in the Crouching Tigron windup. During Blade Dance, prioritize hitting him with the Frost Bomb. Since both of his skills and the ults count as movement abilities, he literally can't do anything when rooted. Against Tyra, try to take note of what talent and build she is running. If she is running Mercy Kill with a damage reduction build, you want to avoid taking 1v1s against her. If she is running Burn Monster, you want to avoid playing with your front lines. On top of that, try to avoid flying low with your Frostfire Glide, as the Fire Cripple can cancel it. Be careful when using the Infernal Cannon against Tyra. Even though she has similar DPS on her primary fire, Tyra has more base health than you, and has lifesteal in her base kit. 
Be mindful of Tyra's Crossfire, as it can shred Amani's Dragon pretty fast. Against Vicky, there really isn't anything special to note of. Be mindful that he can mow you down easily in the Frostfire Glide and Infernal Cannon, but besides that, he's a pretty easy target. Don't be afraid to chase him down if he starts running away. Frostfire Glide at base is faster than his Hustle. Other than that, save your Glide to escape his Barrage. Once in a safe position, you can take him out pretty easily since he's very slow when ulting. When fighting Karen, she's actually pretty easy to duel, but you gotta pop that shield out first. While you can shoot her Sigma Tozies, it can be difficult, especially if you're in Fire Stance. When she pops shield, try to use Frost Bomb or Pyromania Fireballs to get some damage in from around her shield. Avoid using the Infernal Cannon against the Shielded Vivian, as she will just mow you down. When she uses her Sentinels, try your best to focus her down hard. Solo ult her, trade your life for hers, whatever you gotta do to kill her, do it. There's nothing worse than a Vivian walking around uncontested with her broken plates. Fighting Willow is all about your positioning. Avoid playing near your front lines, as that's where Willow likes to toss all of her abilities. If you're quick, you can actually catch her with the Frost Bomb mid-flutter. On top of rooting her, it will waste her cooldown. One last tip for Willow is that it's super easy to shut down her ultimate with the Firefly combo. Once the initial burst of movement from her ultimate is finished, fly up and mow her down. Unless you're at low health, she can't kill you before you kill her. In general, flanks are unfavored matchups to be dealing with, and Androxus proves that. Whether he's using Cursed Revolver or not, his primary fire can take you out with ease. He can pop you in the Frostfire Glide, he can pop you in the Inferno Cannon, he can pop you while charging a Fireball. The best way to deal with Andro, and all flanks, is to scare them off while they're still far away and dealing with high damage falloff. If you can bait out the Nether Steps, that's 10 seconds to you and your team where you won't have to worry about that Edgelord. Besides that, be mindful of his reversal, especially in your fire stance. If you throw him just one fireball, that's 750 damage coming back at ya. Just like with Willow, you can reliably kill him in his ultimate with the Firefly combo. Buck is one of Imani's top counters. Try to avoid him at all costs. If he hits you with the Bounce House combo, you're dead. If he hits you with the Net Shot, you're dead. If he heals a chunk of your damage off, you might be dead. When you do have to fight Buck, take note of his cards. A lot of Bucks run damage reduction on either Leap or Recovery. Whichever it ends up being, try to take the fight to him when those abilities are down, and make sure you have your Frost Bomb available as a retreat option. Against Spinning Nini Koga, play far in the back. And I mean far. His damage falloff on the SMGs is non-existent. If you know that he's targeting you, try to bait out his dashes with the Fireballs or Frost Bomb. If you get him to waste the three dashes, great. You'll either scare him off or have an easier time dueling him. Since Koga at base only has 2000 HP, Fire Stance is your best friend. If you're playing Mana Rift, you can reliably pop him with the Fire Burst combo. Even landing a single Fireball onto him is usually enough to scare him away. Koga is one of those flanks that loves to look for Amani's body during her ultimate. Look to kill him before ulting, or keep the dragon close to defend yourself. Against Eevee, Frost Bomb is your best friend. Try to keep it handy for when Eevee gets close. Besides that, take note of her blink habits. Most Eevees like to blink upwards or behind you for an easy shot. Whatever the case is, adjust your aim accordingly and try to catch her mid-blink. If she's running Wormhole, 9 times out of 10, the Eevee will blink back to their original spot. Keep her original location in mind, and with this knowledge you can usually force the Eevee back home and reliably kill her. Try to avoid using your Infernal Cannon on Eevee. She's going to be jumping all over the place, and it's better to save that cooldown for a more convenient kill. When she uses Ice Block, immediately swap to Fire and begin charging a shot. There is a significant delay once Eevee exits the Ice Block, where she can't use her abilities. Because of this, it's so easy to kill her once she exits the block. If you're caught in the Snowstorm, it's usually game over. This gets even worse if she's running Snow Globe. Oh yeah. You can also reliably pop her with the Fire Burst combo, and it's so satisfying every time. Like other flanks, try to keep your distance with Lex, or scare him off with high damage before he gets to you. Since his slide only gives him horizontal distance, abusing high ground is the best counter to Lex. If you're below 1000 health when fighting Lex, you're probably dead since the auto-aim can kill you during the Frostfire Glide. One last thing to note is that Lex's ultimate can execute your dragon. 
Now, Maeve is one of the most popular champs in this game. Since a lot of people play her, dealing with Maeve ranges from a cakewalk to getting trampled. In terms of her talents, Street Justice is more of a threat to tanks, and let's be honest, no one runs Rogue's Gambit. No, the main talent to watch out for is Cat Burglar. Two sets of boosted daggers deal 2080 damage, and one schlurp will finish you off. Like other flanks, try to scare Maeve away before she gets close. Baiting out 9 lives especially is very helpful for both you and your team. Like Buck, Maeve has a decent selection of damage reduction cards. Try to save your combos for after the damage reduction is gone. Since you gain CC immunity during the Dragon, it's actually a very good call to counter ult Maeve's Midnight with the Dragon. If you're not using the Dragon to counter ult, be super careful if Maeve is still on the field. She is probably the single best character to go after Amani during the ultimate. Now, I know a lot of people hate Moji, but I think she's one of the easier matchups for Amani to deal with. Just bait out the barrier. That's it. Once the barrier is down, just mess her up with that giant hitbox. If she gets close and starts vomiting on you, just glide away and execute the Firefly combo on her. Don't forget to use Frost Bomb to save your allies from being eaten. Against Silicone, you gotta take a peek at her town choice first. If she's running Smoke and Dagger, she'll usually be in the backline with her team, and you could treat her as a support with no mobility. If she's running Debilitate, she's gonna be more traditional flanker. Against Sky in general, regardless of talents, you have options to reliably kill her and to track her during stealth. If she reveals herself to you, turn up the heat with the immersion. <laughs> If she reveals herself to you, turn up the heat with the Infernal Cannon and use the damage numbers to track her if she goes in Viz again. If you lose track of her, you can try to find her with the Frost Bomb's huge AoE. Outside of tracking her in stealth, Sky is easily the most susceptible character to the Fire Burst combo. Since she only has 2000 HP, she will always die to the combo if she doesn't buy Haven. Against Debilitate Skies, be careful of summoning the dragon when she's still alive. The Poison Bolts will end up taking about 2200 HP from the dragon. But again, you could track her in stealth with the numbers from the dragon's attack. Against the child, playing distant is your best bet. Once he gets close and pops overcharge, it's over. If you anticipate that coming, try your best to reposition safely with the Frostfire Glide. On top of keeping your distance, look to root him if he gets close to you or a fellow teammate. Do note that if the timer on Rune of Travel expires, he will still teleport, even if he's rooted. Oh, and Fire Burst combo. I actually find Harold to be one of the easier flank matchups for Amani to deal with. Since Vora doesn't have high burst damage, Amani can be more relaxed with her positioning compared to when she's dealing with other flankers. If she comes in close, look to root her with the Frost Bomb. If she's going after a teammate, look to slow her down with Frost Bolts or scare her away with a Pyre Ball. The only aspect of Aura to look out for is getting hit with the cripple mid-glide. Even if she can't take you out, there's a high chance that her team will. I guess there's also the silence talent, but no one runs that. If she doesn't have the bonus HP card, Fire Burst combo. Last of the flanks, and one of the most annoying to deal with as Amani, is Zin. All of his skills are defensive in nature, making it easy to waste your time and abilities. Most people are going to say that when fighting Zin, you should avoid wasting your secondary cooldowns, as he'll just use his abilities to shake them off. If you're in a 1v1, yes, I agree with that advice. But if you're near your team, I actually find that it's better to sacrifice my abilities so that me and my team can actually get a shot off on the guy. The Frost Bomb will usually bait out the Billow, and the Infernal Cannon will almost always bait out the counter. Once those two abilities are down, all Zin has left at his disposal is the world, which is fairly easy to pin down. Again, the strategy won't reliably work if you're at it alone, so try to play near a teammate so that both of you can clobber on Zin when his abilities are down. And if he has no health cards, Firebus combo. Against Ash and frontlines in general, I find that it's better to prioritize fighting them in ice stance rather than fire. Always look to detonate the frost bomb over her shield to tag enemies on the other side. Additionally with the bomb, you could catch her in the wind-up animation of Shoulder Bash to cancel it. Besides that, just play in the back and save your glide if you get knocked over the edge. Atlas is one of the more scarier frontlines for Amani to deal with. Like Zin, all of his abilities are defensive in nature and can really mess you up. 
On top of that, he has great range damage and can poke you out of the backline. If you pop Stasis Field, try to reposition around it or just wait it out. Keep the Frost Bomb handy for when Atlas gets low. You want to hit the root before he has an opportunity to use Second Chance. Otherwise, you and your team are going to have to go through the whole process of baiting his abilities out and getting him low again. Against Atlas, you have to be the most unpredictable with your Frostfire Glide. Avoid flying in a straight line, and avoid flying near the ground so that he can't hit you with the AoE Deja Vu shot. In general, Atlas is a tricky and unfavored matchup. It's probably best to save him as your last priority. Against Barrack, the biggest tip is to not get distracted by his turrets. They barely deal any damage, and the self-healing provided by these cards is easily countered with Cauterize. Save your Frost Bomb to toss over his shield, or to catch him during his Rocket Boots. Once the Rocket Boots are down, he becomes one of the easier targets to track with the Inferno Cannon. If you do need to shoot his turrets down, do so with the Pyre Ball. Without an HP buff, Barrack's turrets only have 1000 HP. Normally, Barrack's ultimate is pretty underwhelming, but for Imani, it's actually one of the best counters to her dragon. Try to wait until after the Dome Shield has expired to pop the dragon out. Fernando. Ugh, I hate fighting this guy. It's not difficult, but it's so tedious. First off, if he's running Scorch or <laughs> Formidable, then he's an easy target. Keep your distance, wait out the shield, etc. But, a lot of Nandos are running shield spam builds with Aegis. There are two strategies to fighting this. Getting Max Wrecker and spamming him down in ice, or finagling around the shield in fire. While less optimal, let's start with the ice strategy first, since it's easier to do. If you have Max Wrecker, and are the only one shooting the shield, it will take roughly 5 seconds to pop it. If he's running a max cooldown reduction build, you will only have 4 seconds to take him out. And sorry to break it to you, but Imani can't reliably deal 4600 damage in 4 seconds. More likely than not, the Nanda will get another shield up before Imani herself can kill him. So. If you don't want to rely on your dumb dumb teammates, here's another way you can fight infinite shield Nandos. Use your Frostfire Glide to get on top of him. I'm talking directly on top of his head. Once in position, pop your Inferno Cannon. Since his shield can't be tilted up or down, he will have to retreat or take the full 3666 damage. Keep in mind that the Inferno Cannon by itself doesn't do enough damage to kill Nando, but it is the most reliable way to get some damage in on him when he has the stupid shield up. Ugh, I hate fighting that talent. Anyways, like other tanks, you can toss the frost bomb over the shield to damage him and other enemies on the other side. And last up is trying to bait out Immortal with your dragon. Unless the dragon dies during the 4 seconds that Immortal is active, you will be free to rain down destruction once that duration is up. Don't forget to snatch that fool's wig with your dragon by flying over the shield and damaging him. Try to avoid wasting your time with Anara. She has ways to block your damage, and lots of damage resistance. As mentioned in the bug section, splitting ice doesn't work on her warder's field, so don't bother with that. I would also avoid trying the firefly combo on Anara, as she will just use Earth and Guard to eat up the damage, and then slow you with the warder's field when you're forced to land. Dealing with Anara should be a team effort, or someone else's problem. <laughs> lots of little tips against Khan. You can use both Pyromania and Frost Bomb to reliably damage him when he has his shield up. You can damage him with the Firefly combo by flying over the shield, and you can cancel his grab with your Frost Bomb. When he ults, if he doesn't spike you off the edge, you can reliably return to the fight with either your Frostfire Glide or Inferno Cannon, or both if needed. If a teammate is grabbed and you're fast enough, you can actually stop them from falling off the map by colliding with them on their travel path. It's tricky to pull off, and both you and the ally will take 700 damage, but you'll look like a badass if you pull it off. If Makoa is running half shell with Barrier Reef, do not shoot the shield. You are only giving him more of them. Besides that, you're usually playing out of Makoa's effective range, so there's little to worry about. You actually can challenge Makoa during his ultimate with your dragon. It will take a while, but if you have a little aid from your team, you can reliably take down an angry Koa. Ice Stance is very handy when dealing with Raw. The Ice Shards will slow Rom even further when he is firing his gun. If he starts to run at you and your team, look to cancel the ability with your Frost Bomb. The timing is a little tricky, so you want to detonate the bomb closer to yourself so you can avoid missing. 
If he activates Soul Harvest, you can pop Infernal Cannon to melt off the extra 2000 HP he gains from the ability. Do not be afraid to challenge Rom with your dragon. It'll take a while to kill him, but he can't generate any soul armor from the dragon, since it's a deployable. Ruckus is really just a worse Rom with better mobility. Save your Frost Bomb for when he gets close. Other than that, just keep your distance and spam him down with Ice Shards. Keep in mind that his Hexafire can reliably take out your dragon, but I think it's a worthwhile trade. Now we get to Amani's hardest counter in my opinion. When fighting Terminus, you want to take note on his talent and loadout choice. If he's going Undying slash Crush with a damage reduction and speed boost build, you might have a chance. If he's going Decimation with a Siphon reset build, then good luck. Okay, but seriously, let's talk about fighting this guy. The first thing to note is that you cannot, and should not, 1v1 a Terminus. You will lose 90% of the time. Fighting Terminus is a team effort. You need to position in front of him, and another ally, typically a flanker, should be behind him. Once this happens, the Terminus is going to either keep his attention on you, or turn to face the flank. When Terminus isn't looking at you, that's your chance to strike. Usually, this ends up being a ping pong game, where the term is constantly spinning around trying to cover both sides. Eventually, you will whittle him down. Now, the strategy won't work if your team doesn't help you. At that point, you're screwed. You can't go for a frost bomb on his backline, cause he'll siphon it. You can't fly over him for an infernal cannon, because again, he'll siphon it. And both of Amani's primary fire projectiles are easy to notice and siphon. Even though you're typically out of his range, Terminus can shut down everything you do with one ability. Normally, I would say to focus on other targets instead, but a good Terminus can ensure that doesn't happen. Also, do not feed the Siphon! Wrapping up the front lines is everyone's favorite support, Torvald. With Torvald, the main thing to watch out for is not him, but his bubble target. You can actually pop his ally's protection bubble with one fireball, so look to do that when needed. Try to avoid getting close where he can hit you with the Nullify. Amani is screwed without her abilities and is such an easy target when silenced. When you're yeeted off the map, you can use your Frostfire Glide and Inferno Cannon if needed to return to the fight. Besides that, Torvald himself is a pretty easy target. Supports in general are the easiest prey for Amani to take out. Starting with Corvus. Get in close and chase him down after he teleports. Once his dagger is gone, you could kill him easily. Unless he's running Dark Gifts, I find dealing with marked enemies to be pretty easy. Just fight whoever it is is normal. Things get a little challenging for Imani if he's running Stunning Visage, but at that point he's sacrificing healing for damage, so your team should have the edge. Against Furia, watch that stun. Many Furias like to turn corners and then pop the stun from there. Once you hear the audio cue, look to avoid the beam and then take her out with ease. At Max Wrath, Furia can output some decent damage. Try to keep the fights with her at a distance, so she will have to deal with damage falloff while you won't. Keep in mind that Furia is one of the easiest targets to take out with the Inferno Cannon. Even if she uses her dash, it's so predictable that you could just adapt your aim accordingly. Splitting Ice is great against Grog, as the shot procs on his totems. If you're running Fire Stance, be careful of his totems as they can block your shots. Inferno Cannon is also great at damaging both Grok and his totems at the same time. Really, Grok isn't too much of a threat. Just avoid playing clumped with your team, so he can get less Shock Pulse bounces. The only thing to watch out for with Grok is his Tempest. If you're caught, the slow makes it really difficult to escape. Once you get some cauterized though, you can reliably focus down Grok and his Tempest. This will save yourself and your team a major headache. Against the tree, his crippling throw is the main thing to look out for. Other than that, he's so easy to kill, especially with the Firefly combo. Just watch out for that burst heal on Blossom. It's mildly annoying and can throw off your ability combos. Ah yes, the strongest champion in the game and the bane of ranked players everywhere. When fighting Io, all you need to keep note of is the stun from Luna. Bait the stun out by playing near a corner and break line of sight once you hear it coming. If she tries to take cover behind Luna, you could still damage her with the Frost Bomb, Inferno Cannon, and Pyromania Fireballs. Io is a really easy target to kill. You just want to be quick, otherwise Luna will make significant point progress. Like with Torvald, Genos himself is not much of a threat. 
Most Genos players run Luminary. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's all he's good for right now. That 15% damage boost is so busted on champions like Leon or Cassie. Try your best to take him out ASAP to stop him from giving out damage buffs to his team. Save your glide to escape his grip, and look to root him if he tries to flee. Genos is surprisingly the best character to counter your ultimate. If he sees where the dragon is coming from, he can shoot his laser through the walls to get you. Try to avoid revealing your ult location, or just run Ancient Duty at a 5 to tank it. Against Damba, playing at range is a must. If you get hit by a stun, it's usually game over. When he and his teammates are huddling around on the gourd, this is a great opportunity to get a big root with the Frostbomb. Like other supports though, Damba is an easy picking. Now onto another of Imani's top counters in my eyes, that's Pip. The biggest tip is to avoid getting hit by that explosive flask. The 50% slow can last for up to 3 seconds. On top of that, you'll be taking lots of damage if he's using Catalyst. So try to treat Pip like you treat a flanker. Keep him at a distance, and bait out abilities like Healing Potion early. When he tries to jump on you or run away, don't forget that you can root him with the Frost Bomb. If he's running Combat Medic or Mega Potion, he's less of a nuisance to deal with. Those flank pips are the ones you gotta watch out for. Fighting Ceres as any character really boils down to baiting out the Shadow Travel. If you're close enough, you can actually stalk Ceres throughout the duration and just kill her when she exits stealth. One very important thing to note is that the body blocking technique with the dragon won't work against Ceres since she deals piercing damage. Besides that, there isn't much to this matchup. And last up is Ying. Keep her illusion locations in mind and avoid using your secondary abilities until after she's teleported. Once her teleport is on cooldown, it's easy pickings. Once you get cauterized too, you can reliably challenge a Ying's ultimate in both stances. And that's it! If you made it to the end of the series, I congratulate you and hope you learned a thing or two. Let me know what you thought of this guide and if you would like to see more content like this in the future. This video took me the most time to create by far, so I would really appreciate it if you clap that like button and laser down that subscribe button. Snatching the bell is also a great way to stay in the loop. As always, I'm Yellow Ninja, and peace!